Hey guys, it's Tuesday, bit of a rainy day, but it looks like the sun's coming out. So let's check out our calculation. Missing your faces again. So our very first one, we have six times some number equals 54. So this is more just a fact, and we're gonna use our opposite, right? We're gonna use our inverse. So I'm gonna rewrite that problem. When you rewrite that problem as 54 divided by six, that gives me a good idea because on this one, that's a, a basic fact. And I also get a good idea that I know it's gonna be pretty close to 10 if I wasn't sure which one it was, because if I did six, times 10, if I go back to this, six times 10 gives me 60. Because that's like saying the six in the in the tens and the, um, the zero after because it was the zero in the ones. So I know it has to be very close. And since this is a whole number, my actual answer is gonna be nine. <clears throat> so the next one, I'm looking for my answer to 36 divided by nine. So I kind of made ourself again, because these are basic facts, right? So I did my 36 on top, because that's my biggest number. And then I have on the two bottoms, these two numbers are going to be multiplied, right? Remember when we talked about that before, nine times some number equals 36, or I can go some number times nine equals 36, or in the case of a division problem, which is what's here, I'm doing 36 divided by nine, and that's where I get my number here, which is like the problem that's written up here. So I rewrote this because sometimes just using our, um, writing it as multiplication helps jog our memory. So I'm doing nine times what number equals 36? Okay, so I can do it that way. If I use my multiplication chart, I'm doing divided by this number. I rewrote that problem so that it would help you just to see because this is the horizontal, which means you're left to right. And this is what that problem actually looks like. So remember, I'm using this number here that's outside of my, um, outside of the bar. And that's where I'm gonna look at my multiplication table. I'm looking down my column of nines for when I come to 36. And when I do that, when I go down and I get to 36, because 36 is a multiple of nine, I move over and that is four groups. So my answer here is four. Okay, on the next one, we're writing it as an improper fraction. Remember that this means that my number on top, my numerator, is larger than my denominator, the number on the bottom. So here's my um, formula, I guess I would use for that. I do my denominator times my whole. So I'm doing 10 times 10 plus three. So we're gonna write that and we do all of that over 10. Okay, so to help us with this problem, I also decided just because we have two of the tens, I highlighted for my orange denominator. So then you could see in this problem what that is, okay? So then when I do this problem, I'm gonna do my 10 times 10 first and then plus three. So 10 times 10 is 100 plus three. So when I do that, I get my 100 plus three over 10 and then just to save space, sorry guys, I did my um, an arrow and this would be 103 when I add that together over 10. And so here's my answer, this is my improper. Okay, so I'm looking at nine times 8.8. .8. Remember, I rewrote this, we have that commutative where I can, we call it, you know, flip-flop for lack of a better term. But if I keep my, my nine as the second number, that tells me I only have one row here because that's it. If I had my, if I wrote it this way and I put nine on top and I have 8.8 .8 on the bottom, I would need to do my first eight times the nine and I'd have a row. Then I'd put my zero and move over and do my second eight times the nine. So I'd have two things and we call those add-ins. So we're gonna put it this way. The next thing we need to do is we need to make an estimate, right? Well, I know from my facts, 8.8 .8 is closest to nine and I know nine times nine is 81. Let me write that what I'm talking about. Okay, so just to clarify, right, I took my 8.8 .8, because I have my eight and eight tenths, so I'm rounding up to nine, and I know nine times nine is 81, so my answer should be pretty close to 81. Okay, so then I'm gonna do my multiplication. So I'm gonna do nine times eight, and I get 72. But my two, I carry my seven. I'm gonna do nine times eight, and I'm gonna get 72 again, plus I'm gonna add the seven. 
right? So I'm counting up. So 72 plus seven gives me 79. And then I'm going to um, take a look after, right? Because I have my decimals. I have one place. So I'm gonna move this over one place and I put it there. So my answer should be 79.2 or 79 and two tenths, which is very close to 81. And I knew it wasn't gonna be exact. I knew it was gonna be less because I rounded up. Hopefully you did well on that one. Okay, so I have 80 divided by two. When I write that out, it looks like this. My opposite using my inverse could also be looking at it as a multiplication problem. So I would have it like this. Well, I know that for some of you, you get a little bit worried. So let's break it down for a second. When I see this zero here, I know I'm going to have a 10 in that. So what if I gave you this problem? If I gave you this problem, two times what number equals eight, I'm hoping you would recognize right away, oh, that's just two groups of four, right? So there's my four. Well, when I have this zero on here, I'm gonna do it this way. I'm just doing times 10, right? Because I'm gonna add a zero into that place. So I know right away, actually, guys, my answer here is 40. Just to go over our steps for our division to make sure we have that though, I'm also going to go down here. So if I'm looking, remember for division, I start here on the left. If I have eight items and I'm looking for how many groups of two I can make, I can make four groups of two. Two times four is eight. I'm gonna subtract, I get zero. I'm gonna bring down this zero. And anytime if I have zero items, I can't make any groups. Two times zero gives me zero. So that's where I'm left. So here's where I get my 40. Okay, hope it's going well. Let me know if you need more help.